Part 4 of Unit 2 is about oxidation reduction reactions. An oxidation reduction or redox reaction occurs when electrons are transferred from one atom to another during a reaction. In a lot of reactions, electrons stay with their parent atom. The atoms just trade places with one another. But in a redox reaction, not only do atoms trade places, but electrons are transferred also. To keep track of where electrons begin and end in a reaction, we can assign every atom an oxidation state. Assigning oxidation states is pretty easy. For an element in its natural state, be that solid, liquid, or gas, it's got an oxidation state of zero. And monatomic ions, like a sodium ion or chlorine ion, the oxidation state equals the charge of the ion, so those are also real easy. We know those based off of just you know where they are on the periodic table. In a neutral compound, the sum of the oxidation states is going to be zero. That means the positive and negative oxidation states are going to cancel out, similar to charges in an ionic compound. And the sum of the oxidation states in a polyatomic ion equals the charge on that ion. So instead of positive and negative oxidation states canceling each other out, for a polyatomic ion, they're going to add up to equal that charge. So if the polyatomic ion has a charge of negative 2, the positive oxidation states are going to be 2 less than the negative ones. These are the general rules for assigning oxidation states. I'm going to read through them. You may want to pause this and copy them down. Nonmetals tend to have negative oxidation numbers, although some are positive in certain compounds or ions. By the way, oxidation states and oxidation numbers, they're used interchangeably. Uh, oxygen always has an oxidation state of negative 2, except in the peroxide ion, which has an oxidation state of minus 1. But 99.9% .9 of the time, oxygen has an oxidation state of negative 2. When hydrogen is bonded to a metal, it's got an oxidation state of minus 1, and it's plus 1 when it's bonded to a nonmetal. You don't see metal hydrides very often, so hydrogen is usually going to be plus 1. Fluorine is always going to be minus 1. The other halogens have a state, oh, there's a typo. Oh, well, the other halogens have a state number, <laughs> have an oxidation state or oxidation number of minus one when they're negative. They can have positive oxidation states if they're in ions that are combined with oxygen. Oxygen would be the negative oxidation state and those other halogens could be positive. Let's look at some examples and assign oxidation numbers or oxidation states. In water, our rule said that oxygen was always a minus two, so the oxidation state of oxygen is minus 2. For hydrogen, it's with a nonmetal, so it's going to be plus 1. Now since there's two of these hydrogens, remember they cancel out, there's no charge on water, so each hydrogen has an oxidation state of plus 1. Oxygen has an oxidation state of minus 2. Whenever you're asked to find the oxidation state for an element, it's talking about one atom of that element. So for hydrogen, it's an oxidation state of plus 1. We don't want to add those together, we just want to say it's plus one for each hydrogen atom. Let's look at sulfite, which is SO3 with a minus two charge. Again, we're going to start with oxygen. The, uh, oxygen and hydrogen are going to be the two elements that you start with most of the time. There are three oxygens, each with a negative two oxidation state. We have to figure out what the oxidation state for sulfur is. We know that in a polyatomic ion, when you add the positive and negative states together, it's going to equal the charge on that polyatomic ion. So we need something that when added to negative 6 is going to equal negative 2. Well, that would be plus 4. So our one sulfur atom has an oxidation state of plus 4. Let's look at sulfate. Sulfate is SO4 with a negative 2 charge. Now we've got four oxygens for a total negative oxidation state of negative eight. That's going to make this sulfur and sulfate have an oxidation state of plus six. Positive six added to negative eight is going to equal negative two. Let's look at aluminum bromide. 
this is a fairly easy one. We can just take the charges from these ions from the periodic table. Aluminum has an oxidation state of plus three, and uh, bromine has an oxidation state of minus one. And let's look at dinitrogen pentoxide, N2O5. We've got five oxygens, each with a negative two oxidation state. This is a neutral compound, so these two nitrogens have to add together to equal negative 10. Well, that's got to be positive 5. So each nitrogen has an oxidation state of positive 5. We can apply these oxidation states or oxidation numbers to reactions. Once we balance a reaction, we're going to assign oxidation numbers to each atom like we just did. And then we're going to use the uh, acronyms Leo Ger or oil rig to identify what was oxidized and what was reduced in the reaction. Now let's look at these. Leo Ger, Leo the lion says Ger. It's an acronym for lose electrons oxidized gain electrons reduced. So the atom that loses electrons is said to be oxidized and the atom that gains electrons is said to be reduced. And we'll go into that in detail in just a second. Let me go over oil rig. I like oil rig better. Oil rig stands for oxidation is losing, and you know you're talking about electrons, reduction is gaining. I didn't spell that right, gaining, there. Okay, so if something is oxidized, it loses electrons. That's going to make its oxidation state more positive. It's getting rid of electrons that have a negative charge, so its oxidation number is going to increase. It's going to become more positive. Something is reduced if it gains electrons. It's taking on extra negative charges, so its oxidation number is going to be reduced. It's going to be driven down, be made more negative. Let's look at this reaction as an example. So we've got solid sodium placed in a container filled with chlorine gas, and it's going to produce sodium chloride. First thing we need to do is balance it. We got two chlorine, so we'll throw a two there and in front of sodium. We need to identify what was oxidized and what was reduced. So we're going to start by assigning an oxidation number to each element on both sides of the reaction arrow. S uh, solid sodium and chlorine gas, that's their natural state. So they both are starting with an oxidation number of zero. And on this side, they're just acting as monatomic ions. So sodium is a plus one and chlorine is a minus one. We don't have to worry about coefficients when we're determining um, what the oxidation numbers are. So if we look at chlorine, chlorine went from a zero to a minus one. It became more negative. For something to become more negative, it gains an electron. So when something gains an electron, it is reduced. Let's look at sodium. Sodium went from a zero to a plus one. It became more positive. You get more positive by getting rid of negative electrons. So it lost electrons. So that means it was oxidized. So sodium was oxidized and chlorine was reduced in this reaction. Okay, let's look at another reaction where methane is burned in air. Remember, we've got CH4 and we have to have oxygen as reactant. We're going to assume a complete combustion and form carbon dioxide and water. We need to go through and assign oxidation states to everything. O2 is easy because it's in its natural state. So that oxygen has an oxidation state of zero. 
Uh, hydrogen is with a non-metal, so we're going to assume that it's positive. It's got a plus one charge, and there's four of them. So that's going to mean that carbon has to be minus four to balance that out. Let's move over to the product side. Oxygen with non-metal, we know it's going to be negative two, so carbon's got to be a plus four on this side. And we've got hydrogen with non-metal again, so it's plus one, and oxygen's a minus two. So we need to identify what changed oxidation states. Carbon went from a minus four to a plus four, so it changed. Hydrogen was a plus one, stayed a plus one, and oxygen went from zero to being a minus two. So oxygen, we can extend this one over this guy, it went from a zero to a negative two, became more negative, so that means it gained electrons, so that means it was reduced, according to Leo Gerr or oil rig. Carbon went from a minus four to a plus four, became more positive, and it does that by getting rid of electrons, so it lost electrons, so carbon was oxidized. Another hint to it being oxidized is it ended up uh, bonded with an oxygen on the product side. Now that we can identify the elements that get oxidized and get reduced, let's talk real quick about the oxidizing and reducing agents. We know in this example carbon got oxidized. That means that oxygen was the oxidizing agent it caused carbon to get oxidized. Oxygen got reduced. That means that carbon is going to be the reducing agent. It's just the opposite. So the thing that gets oxidized is the reducing agent. And the thing that gets reduced is the oxidizing agent. One is causing the change in the other element. Question this section. Identify the oxidizing agent in the following reaction.